Bethel AME has been in Bloomington since 1870, and its longtime church was granted historic status in August. Now other properties with ties to the black community could follow suit. Holden Absher has this report. Our Miller Grubb knows to ask somebody before throwing something away. It's a lesson she learned in the 70s as a newer member in Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church. She was cleaning when her and another member came across a cup in the pastor's lectern. And we found this dirty, nasty, ugly thing with stuff stuffed in it. And we said, what are we going to do with this? And we said, well, we ought to throw it away. A part-time preacher told Grubb the cup was worth keeping. It turns out it belonged to Maddie Jacobs Fuller, who collected $13,000 in it during the early 1920s to help build the current Bethel AME. She sat the cup next to a small organ as she sang and played gospel music on the courthouse square. Fuller was born into slavery in Kentucky and moved after the Civil War. She trained as a hairdresser, eventually becoming the richest black woman in Bloomington. Meanwhile, just up the road in Indianapolis, hairdresser Madam C.J. Walker became the first self-made black female millionaire. Indianapolis has not forgotten about Madam Walker. Bloomington has forgotten about Maddie Jacobs Fuller. Mitchell says she wants Bloomington to commemorate Fuller in some way. She kind of had a one-up over on Madam C.J. Walker. So she could do hair, she could play the organ, and she could sing. When the current church was complete in 1922, a lot of members worked for the university. And still today, IU employees play an important role in the 55-person congregation. A lot of the faculty and staff, um, you know, have become members over the years, and then they bring in their colleagues and so forth, and then, of course, the students, the many students. Currently, no IU students attend the church, but it's looking to recruit younger members now that services are in person. My hope is that it continues to just grow by leaps and bounds, honestly, and that our membership can uh, gain like it once was, where we used to have to go pull out extra chairs. The church's path to historic status began when Elizabeth Mitchell, who also sits on the city's Historic Preservation Commission, realized it didn't have any protection from future development. She contacted members and helped them petition the property to the city. I come from Indianapolis. I know about Indiana Avenue and a lot of buildings that should not have been torn down that meant a lot to African Americans are gone. Apartments or retail stores. I didn't want to see that happen to Bethel. Mitchell says there are other properties on the near west side she wants to see protected soon, including the BG Pollard Lodge, which is known as The Hole. The former Elks Lodge on West 7th Street was a popular hangout for black residents and students. They came over here to have a place where you could breathe, where you could be yourself, where you could be with people like you that weren't trying to feel your skin or touch your hair. She says it's important for everybody, especially younger people that are not from Bloomington, to learn about all aspects of the city's shared history. And, and not just one version, not just one story, because then people get lost and they're forgotten forever. One way to remember stories is by saving and protecting property property you should ask somebody about before throwing it away. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Holden Absher.